Welcome back to the North American LCS. And we're going to hand the mic over to you and let you do the talking. To remind you, earlier in the show, we asked you, what nickname would you give the CLG sub squad? And we've gotten a ton of creative responses. At Andre FMT says, Zombie CLG, because they've revived so many players to play for them. Balls. <laughs> oh, that's, the game, that's the game at the last... Uh, Game of the day. There we go. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And at Lull Objections says, I've personally been partial to the Guardians of the CL Galaxy. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. That one's pretty good. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to... Uh... Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The following one is uh, at Kevin is rad, Counterfeit Logic Gaming. Okay, okay. Because it's not the real Counter Logic Gaming. Got that one. Pretty good one. And our final one here... At Futon, Hotshot, and various league players who may or may not be friends because who are we to speculate on their friendship? <laughs> Let's not go that far. Not tabloid journalists here. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. We don't know what goes beyond, on behind closed doors. They seem to pre be pretty good friends, They though. can all hate each other's guts. That's true. All we know. Well, thank you to everyone who wrote in. But keep flooding our inbox. Tweet at Lolly Sports and use the hashtag LCS to chime in. Now, as we throw it over to the caster desk, LMQ say every game, no matter the outcome, is an opportunity to learn and improve their game. Because No breaks in the hype train for CLG. Then if they stop, others will take their place. They're not going to do that. What's up, guys? I'm David Freak Turley. Making the other half of this caster duo with me is Sam, Kobe, Hartman, Kensler. But did you know that if we put our names together, we talked about duo lanes, we have <laughs> yeah. four coming on. Um, if we put our names together, it would be like you're in jail because it would be free Kobe. A plus. Yeah. No. Uh, sure, why not? We're charging into our next match, Evil Geniuses versus LMQ. Now, Kobe, LMQ are just one game away from locking up first place. And what a huge comeback that was for LMQ to defeat Dignitas. Dignitas did look to be in complete control of that situation, but LMQ were able to sneak that Baron. They had vision control around it and got right back into the game. Then once they pulled even, LMQ made crisp and decisive moves uh, to keep Dignitas back on their heels and finish the game. And meanwhile, Evil Geniuses have been on a complete tear. They're now 3-0 and oh this week. They secured the seventh place spot, but for the dream for EG is real. Yeah, and in our first game, Krepo showed that a support can carry. He had a huge impact, and he brought a lot of map pressure with his roaming Morgana, having that 100 kill participation, 100%. Um, as well, his lane partner, Altec. We have to shout out that guy. He had a great game on Kog'Maw with exceptional positioning during those team fights. There was a bit of trouble, though, with Inox struggling uh, on that first pick, Lulu. And there may have been some miscommunication issues there with the rest of the team, too. So we'll see how it works out this game. We saw people come in and fight at really good times. So Hopefully they fix it up here for this one, because LMQ won to really punish mistakes. But we're going to check out these starting lineups. On the blue side, Evil Geniuses with Inox in the top lane, Helios in the jungle, Poe Belter in the mid lane, Altec on AD carry and Crepo on support carry. And on the red side, it's LMQ. Up top is Ackerman in the jungle, no name, mid Shao is Shao, AD carry Vasily and support more. So as we get into this one, winning this game means LMQ are guaranteed first place here heading into the playoffs. They will basically take that title from Cloud9, who had had it twice in a row. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the road here for LMQ. They've had a really good run so far in Super Week as well, and uh, they kind of expect to be coming in as favorites. Yeah, so uh, the Cloud9 guys right now are cheering 100% uh, for mm -hmm. EG. I mean, they were like, down there by the room. They're like, come on, guys. I know you can do it. I believe. 4-0 the dream. Yeah. And, and EG are like, oh, the first Super Week we go 4-0, it doesn't matter for us. It, it's, yeah. it would be for you guys. Hey, man, but it's for all the fans as well. Evil Geniuses, of course, not really going to go silently into the night anyway. We'll see them in the promotion tournament regardless where they can defend their spot in the LCS. And they can look all kinds of menacing as they get themselves into that tournament. But right now, they've got LMQ in front of them. The Yasuo away from Xiao Wei Xiao. Yeah, definitely expect that, Van. Um, he's been a huge part of LMQ's victories. The other person who's been a huge part, of course, Ackerman in the top lane. Uh, playing a lot of Lulu and Graga. Since LMQ banned out Lulu themselves, I expect an EG Gragas fan at some point. Yeah, there we go. Um, and that should do a lot of work in the top lane here. 
Speaking of the top lane, by the way, we haven't seen Inox play Nidalee this whole split yeah. yet coming into the LCS, like even before <laughs> the split. Everyone was like, oh my god, Inox is coming. We've been banned Nidalee against him all the time. And they have, right. literally the whole split. We'll see if he ever gets this champion, though. Remember there was one time last week they left that up and wanted to kind of pick Aurelia and Crumbs just camped the lane and yeah. Brian Spartan killed him anyway. <laughs> uh, but I've seen a ban against him other times. I really do want to see the Inuk Nidalee. The story I like to tell about him is one of his old challenger Ooh. teams. Anytime Ooh. you do see one of these though, one of the top 80 carry bans, you have yeah. to think, uh, is the second ban going to come out or are they going to give away a first pick Tristana? Well, Tristana, really, really important here. It's true. It's big for Alltech and I know Vasily likes the champion a whole bunch as well. And he's like, now do I pick for myself and ignore the team <laughs> and just go for that Nidalee? This is, a, this is a big choice for Inarx. He's like, I haven't been able to play Nidalee in so long, but Tristana, we'll see. He's giving him sass back. You can see, like, shakes the head, says, you know, but I really could just beat up Ackerman right now. Mm -hmm. And Alex like, but, but I want to but I, but I play Tristana. We'll see, because there are also, you know, uh, Lee Sin and... Yep. Yeah, Lee Sin and Maokai up. All right, so Maokai in the top lane is pretty much all about team fight. He's not a lane bully or anything. The reason no. he's so highly prioritized right now is because of the ultimate when he gets to the team fights. Um, he's not he's not one that's going to beat out Inox. So maybe Evil Geniuses do go with a strong laner like Nidalee, try and keep him down and then go for split push. That yep. way, Maokai doesn't get a chance to join the rest of the team. Uh, they could try and split up LMQ and keep them from that really strong team fight that they're known for. Well, the reason I don't necessarily love Nidalee in this case, though, is that if you assume you're going to win your lane anyway, like you've got matchups like yeah. uh, Nidalee Aurelia, where Aurelia at some point later in the game just wins the 1v1, just has to suck through the early game. If Maokai loses early game regardless, why go for an even heavier early game bully and play something a bit later game? But you know what? Forget why what I bring? said. Forget what I said. <laughs> Nidalee comes in anyway. Inox going to bully him out. Yeah, you shut your mouth. Hey, they want a split push. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know. I know. But I like your point because there's a lot of champions that you can use in the top lane that will do fine or even beat Maokai, right. which you otherwise wouldn't usually get to use. That's why we've seen a lot of Mundo up there versus him. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you just are like, okay, we'll trade super tanks, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but this is, I kind of like this better just because it's a diversion strategy. And you're like, we're not going to trade you tanks in the top lane. Nope. We're going to actually try and split you up later in the game. And we're going to break you down that way. It's also... Whoa! Pobelts are bringing in Zed for one of the first times of the year as well, and Morgana still for Crepo. So this is all kinds of fun. The ninja's coming out here, very assassin focused. Do it. <laughs> oh, you're gonna one up us? Uh, Boydway's done it. Shall we? Shall I don't know how many games he's put on on Talon, but I would love to see the matchup. Double AD assassins in yep. the mid lane. Season three all over again, guys. No, oh, and both junglers are very strong uh, for ganking mid lane too. So that would be a very hectic uh, skirmish if we did see that. So just because assassins to turn invisible doesn't mean they've necessarily disappeared. <laughs> guys, they're still around. We'll see how many. The thing to watch whenever you see these assassin picks is how many exhausts do the other team decide to take? Because sure. you know a lot of spots have been filled up. AD carries pretty much always have to take heal. <laughs> Top laners yeah. always have to take teleports, and assassins always have to take ignite. Well, it's going to be fun and very explosive. Now, LMQ's run some AD assassin bit before, but his Pantheon game didn't work out so well against Curse a few months back. But the Talon versus Zed matchup oh, is yeah. here, and it's going to be fun. This is going to be really fun. We'll see which which team is able to get their uh, mid lane assassin roaming because that is actually a big big. Uh, counter counter here to a split pushing Nidalee. Yeah. If you get a fed Talon, then you can have Talon destroy Nidalee. He's right. one of the few champions that will catch her. She's very slippery, but Talon is one of the champions that will be able to do it and kill her in the late game. So yeah. this may be one case again of LMQ changing something up in picks bands, which they said they don't really like to do. Mm -hmm. But if you see something like this come out, I really like the choice here to go for that talent, just True. in case there is that late game split pushing Nidalee. And what if EG can get two split pushes going the Nidalee and the, the, the Zed together? I like the options here. Of course, yeah. It's going to be fun, probably pretty hectic, and there's going to be a lot of kills. Let's pull up the fan vote now from LOLesports.com. See which way you guys are calling this match. With 67% of the vote, LMQ is leading Evil Geniuses, but 
There's still that 4-0, the dream chance. Yeah, so you guys can keep on sending in your votes. If you believe in the 4-0, uh, use the hashtag EGWIN. If you don't, use the hashtag LMQWIN. Send those over to LOL Esports, and we will be updating that graph to show you throughout the game. Unfortunately, neither of these logos turn into circus animals in various states of conflagration, because that would be great. I was so excited during like script writing. I was like, yeah, let's get an actual elephant in here. Yep. Let's do this 100%. Uh -huh. uh, we, we got the noise. That was pretty good. <laughs> That's fine. As long as you can hear it. And Short notice, you know. We would have done it for well, sure. Well, sure, of course. I mean, there must be elephants somewhere here in Los Angeles. I've always wanted to ride an elephant. You've never ridden an elephant? No. Nope. Maybe when we go traveling over to Southeast Asia. That'd be cool. Well, enjoy it's that. It's on the bucket list. That's cool. I've ridden a camel before. Woo! The poor man's elephant. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Messed up. Oh, yeah. It's a long day here during Super Week. You need to... Stay fed, stay hydrated as well, guys out there. Absolutely. Hey, man. Might have been elephant meat. No. It was on fire. It was that... already cooked. <laughs> All, right. All right. right. Let's, Let's dial it back here. Let's dial it back. <laughs> All right. Evil geniuses, they have nowhere to go in the standings but pride to fight for. The only team, I believe, that could 4-0 the Super Week at this point. Evil yeah, geniuses. How, how funny is that? That EG, the team that keeps on going 0-4, yeah. In all previous Super Weeks, is the, the would be the one team that could pull it off this time around. Ooh, some sneaky moves already. Vasily's trying to lure Altec in. He's like a snake oh, jarber. There's the hook. There's the cue. Altec's going to rocket jump. Can he get far enough away? No cooldowns available on CC. That is a pretty big win for landing phase, though. Vasily just ensured that there will be no explosive shot harass level one. Mm-hmm. Well, EG, by the way, we're not expecting the Talon lock-in. We actually have a, a clip from them in Champ Select. When yeah, we I, that happen. I don't doubt it. I'm getting scared. Oh, boy. Oh! oh. I it. Boy, boy! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm getting scared. We'll see if that affects Pope Belter's game. Well, Void Boy did pull it off, so that was a good shout-out right there. See if uh, Shao Shao is just a wannabe or a P2 can make the talent work. EG getting the Twitter vote. After the rocket jump was forced. Yeah, true. Yeah. So that, I thought that would negatively They don't believe in talent. Draft. We'll see here. Double flash. What? Sorry. A little bit early. Oh. I don't believe in Vasily either, apparently. So, so this is... yeah. Well, there's a little thing where it comes a bit early on, uh, depending on what patch you're on. So he got maybe a bit tricked right there. Oh, uh, Helios level 2, though. He didn't hit anything too early. Actually, you can't, as uh, Evelyn. It's actually impossible. But <laughs> hit his spells on time. Oh, the binding on a Moore, though. Whoa. A lot of health. Doesn't need a supposed to shot for that one. That's half HP gone. Very aggressive positioning from Moore there. In uh, the enemy creeps. Pretty easy binding for Krepo to hit. And he mm -hmm. does get a lot of good harass there. But again, the no explosive shot level 1 means that their trade was fairly even because of it. Oh, those bindings keep hitting, though. Crepo. He's getting money for those, too. Yep. $5 every time and one CS. You know he stole a, a oh, minion at some if point. If you could trade the gold for dollars, then that would... <laughs> I would buy an Average Blade first every game. <laughs> Play Gangplank a lot? Oh, man. I wouldn't care if I won. Let's see if... Just buy Teemo skins with all the proceeds. Uh, Altec takes a Phosphorus Bomb. They're trading back and forth. Let's see if the junglers decide to make any move because it's been... Wow, is that three for three for Crepo since we've been looking? Yeah. And he's been greedy with it, too. He didn't learn Black Shield at level 2. He's just wanting to bully out LMQ and trust their ability to dodge skill shots. Well, yeah, behind, if, as long as you're behind these minions, if you can use your minion line uh, during the early levels versus Thresh, then he has nothing really to worry about. That, was, that push was warded, too, by the way. So yeah. the side push control, he still gets hit. Krepo's just showing off for the crowd right now. <laughs> and Moore might want to change his name to Soar with how much damage he's taking. What? <laughs> all right, let's look mid lane It's the here. last week of the season. Let's, I have to let's get them look all mid lane out. here, all right? We had enough of this garbage <laughs> okay, down, okay, down okay, bottom okay. CS uh, We've got a Lee Sin waiting in the wings. He was waiting for a counter gank there uh, because the wave is pushing up. So when you're yeah. a jungler, you don't always... You, you see your uh, laner pushed up. You don't always want to say, oh, well, he's pushed up. I can't gank for him. Mm -hmm. Good forethought there going into the counter gank possibility for No Name. Didn't want Shao Shao to be too far extended and exposed. Because unlike Zed, Talon cannot use his jump for an escape unless somehow a minion, enemy minion gets behind him. Uh, so he, when he pushes up, is a lot more exposed than Pobelter is while he's on that Zed. 
Yeah, true. Speak. Did, go ahead. Still waiting around there, but it looks like Dominic is going to get around behind him. Damage coming in. No names around here as well, though, and the boats are forced to back away. We said talking about keeping tabs on the enemy junglers and getting uh, caught out and whatnot. Uh, we just saw Ackerman put a very deep ward down to look for Helios by the white camp. Helios going to find no name, Such though. a bold move by no name here. The E is down. Q comes out, though. He wants to fight Helios right away, forces the W out of him. Trading damage with red buffs. So that was actually a bad move by Helios to go fight Lee Sin there because his mid laner was the one who was pushed into the turret. Mm. Because of the fight among junglers, Pobelter had to come around and missed a few CS. So, and not only that, but he lost out the jungler 1v1 trade uh, by being hit by the Q, so. Well, Belter managed to get equal XP though. He's actually first to level five, trying to pull the out. Vasily gets by it as well. <laughs> Krepos is putting on a show here. I think the observers might be working with Krepo mm -hmm. just to only show the camera when he hits the binding. Yeah, when the bot, when the, uh, <laughs> when the camera's gone, just watch Krepo's uh, mana bar. When it goes down, we don't show it. He missed the binding. Yeah. Everyone watch that bottom corner. All right, we'll see here though. Helios, before he went for that move, by the way, he got some good vision down in the blue side jungle yeah. of LMQ. So his journey into enemy territory was not all for nothing. You can watch now. Innox trying to bully around Ackerman in the top lane. Right now, up 8 CS. Ackerman opened Chalice for more sustain in this matchup. Yeah. And as you said, you know, a lot of a lot of champions can get CS leads on Maokai. So not a uh, huge surprise there. Plus, Nidalee herself, pretty big lane bully. We'll see if it, if it starts to get out of control, though. Um, if Innox can get a big enough lead before Xiao Wei Xiao becomes a factor, completing his... Uh, Oh, it looks like he's going for Tiamat first there with the pickaxe. Uh, before he can compete, complete his first item, and then it can draw a lot of the resources from LMQ away from the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. And that's really probably the best strategy in the current state of Maokai. Keep them pulled apart. And Helios wants to look at the top lane here, maybe get some ward coverage. Buffs respawn in about a minute's Ooh. time. Helios knows Ooh. No Name's going for the tricky move, though. Inox could be ready for this, but he's down an item. Oh. Helios gets spotted here by No Name. Q lands. Yeah, the he goes for it, though, in front of Nidalee. Javelin has to be flashed away from No Name. Got to be careful. Xiao Wei Xiao comes in. Q lands the Helios. There's the engage. One from dead in first blood to Xiao Wei Xiao off the flash, though. No Name's got no way out. They're going to trade one back. Inox claims the kill, but here comes Maokai. Here comes Deathmark. The trade continues. Xiao Wei Xiao taking a lot of damage. Pavelter forced to flash away. Now Inox does have flash, does have the chance for the kill, but can't quite get it. Pavelter forced away. Pavelter left him out to hang out to dry right there. I don't know. They could have picked up that one kill, but uh, Pavelter left a little bit early there. And I was, the reason I was groaning for uh, Helios, he didn't have to bait that in by showing himself. He could have just walked a little bit higher and got into the bush. No Name still would have went for this, still would have committed when he saw Inox. So I think Helios maybe uh, cost himself his own life there, showing getting a little bit too close to Lee Sin. But let's see here. The ultimate from Zed is great in 2v2s because he does get plenty of AoE down, but flashes out a little early while the focus is on Inox, and they lose out on the Xiao Xiao answer kill. Yeah. Oof, all that early action does give a small 200 gold lead for LMQ. And Pobelter just barely missed both his Qs onto Xiao Wei Xiao. The kill would have actually kept Inox alive, probably, who still had flash. So one missed skill should actually trade it a kill back to one side instead of the other. And it's LMQ with the lead right here. Helios now back in his own jungle, looking to get level 6 off this red buff. Yeah. The jungles are traded pretty equally. I guess it was a couple little misplays there, because... That does get very, very high damage auto attacks on low health targets. We will never know, though. Now let's see how that affects the top lane, because Z uh, Inox did purchase his Sheen first, uh, so that is going to help out his harass a lot on Ackerman. And Ackerman really does need to uh, keep up that sustain. It's very hard to see us as Malachi under your turret. His spells are yeah. fairly awkward to use because all of them are AoE, and you kind of mess up other CS. If you even uh, get the one that you're going for, which is low health, you'll put the other minions at awkward levels. And Krepo, it's another binding. He's earning a lot of cash, by the way. Already up to Frostbang as well. That accuracy definitely pays off. 
Big story though is LMQ have their mid assassin two kills very early on, and he went mobility boots. Oh yeah. Which lane will he prioritize? They've got four pink wards along their territory, so he's got a clear road to either lane. He can just surprise gank either side. It looks like this bottom lane does need a lot of help because man, Altec and Crepo are beasting down here. The turret's almost dead. Even though this Helios gank is... Well, he's invisible. He, he didn't have to show yet. So they actually don't know he's in there, even though they have that ward. They look for the counter gank. Can't find that just yet. Pavelter gets away. Oh. Actually deals more damage to Shai Wai Shao. Outplayed the rake with the uh, shadow. Yeah, that was a pretty good outplay there. We'll see, though. They want the Vas fight. So Vasily oh, yeah. Helios! Vasily suddenly realized that was a horrible idea and goes down to Altec. The stun will hit, not hit more, actually. And Krepa gets stunned into the turret. That is a dead support there. Inox burn his TP for that one. Vasily tries to sort of bait in uh, so that Shao Wei Shao's first roam down bottom uh, was going to be effective. But again, that Evelyn, a bush control ward there on the side bush, doesn't really matter against Evelyn. And EG get the counter gank off. Trying to turn it into a dragon here because Maokai had to use his teleport for healing early on in lane. Oh, no name one. Oh, no. He gets the smite. He does not get out, though. But Shao Wei Shao trades one back on Inox. Now Moore's being chased. Helios very low on mana, but it's going to be enough. Looks like three kills for evil geniuses as payment for the dragon. Helios with an early smite, and then No Name comes in to clean up the scraps. Did cost him his life, though. Mm -hmm. One for three trade still goes in EG's favor. They still have more gold, and they still have plenty of map control here, uh, working towards that mid. All right, so Vasily dodges out the binding this time. That was extremely beneficial, but then charges head first in. Altec also short jumps uh, before the flash of Vasily, because there is that cast time on Shasana's jump. He wasn't able to uh, get in there quick enough. But Xiao Xiao ends up with one kill for his troubles because of the commitment. And then I'm pretty sure it is an early smite here. We'll watch the animations. But No Name does to make a risky move here. Uh, goes in and he immediately heads towards Dragon. So it is an early smite, yeah. Uh, the ultimate's still available for Xiao Xiao. Not able to turn it around for them though. They jump in on NX though. Four men strong. Nowhere for Nimbly oh. to go. Kick back as well. He keeps trying to buy some time. Shao Wei Shao gets it with the bleed from Noctian Diplomacy. That's, out they go. That's what we were worried about in Champ Select when they lock in the talent. If he does get a good early start, then he's going to be able to shut down any split pusher. Vasily! Oh, the damage shall put out goes Pobel He stays alive. What a kill right there. Very deep dive. Great usage of the shadow there from his ultimate, but he gets hooked in by Moore! And Moore puts the lantern down, the two-man play, but Velter forced to run away, but the fight's still going on. Helio stuck inside the box, here comes Xiao Wei Xiao, the damage comes through, Moore actually gets the kill for himself. Uh-oh, teleported in from Ackerman though, they're not gonna give up on this chase. Maokai uh -oh. circling around. Well, Inox forced to walk at the top lane, he cannot get in here. Altec, Pobelter, and Crepo. Altec has ult. All right, does not push back Akrami just yet, could push back more. Ulti gets popped, does not block true damage though, he's losing a fair bit of health. Krepo lands up binding, he's now surrounded, pops the ulti in, out goes No Name. Krepo loses life but saves his teammates. Hero Krepo. So the teleport there from uh, Maokai does secure them one kill, but they committed everybody who was alive to the bottom side of the map. Leaving Inox to split top. push up top, as Nidalee should. And he's going to have a 20 minion lead here and potentially equalize the turrets for himself. When that happens, Shao Wei Shao, 9, Brutalizer plus T, Matt. You said the uh, getting a good early start on the Assassin is going to be useful. I feel like 5, 1, and 2 at 13 minutes. Pretty good early start. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I had when, I, when we were mentioning it before, he had all of the kills, but LMQ just got two more. So he doesn't have 100% of them, however. Still 100% kill participation yeah. from Shao Wei Shao. Look at this, so Evil Geniuses, they're up about a thousand gold, they're up two turrets, they've only got that one Dragon Steel coming against them. But they've got three kills on this first pick, all tech Tristana. We've talked about a lot of teams rallying around their AD carries, letting them carry the game for them. Right here, EG are set up for that, as long as they can feel Xiao Wei Xiao. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, this talent, so successful in North America, Freak, is this mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the, new, the new, the the new, new NA meta pick? Flavor of the, of the Super Week here.
Europe has Aurelia. It's, it's been two very specific cases, though, that went in his favor. Not just due to the champion pick. We'll see what Xiao Xiao can do. Early mobility boots definitely paid off so far. Uh, but two versus one is definitely a tall task tier. Especially, especially since uh, Altec does have his heal summoner available. That's true. I welcome Krepo to keep everyone alive. Of course, Krepo does not block any of Talon's damage with Black Shield, only blocks the Silence, so there's actually very little use in that spell. It's well, only on his exhaust. Hey, blocking, blocking the Silence is very important if blocking he's next them. to Altec. Blocking Silence for Altec would mean Altec can either ultimate or jump away, so mm -hmm. it's pretty big if he's near his uh, AD carry. Wouldn't do a whole lot for himself if he got caught by Talon, though. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it's going to work out then for Evil Geniuses. Pressure is on Altec because Talon kind of one-shots people, especially with an item lead like this one. Well, right now, level 11 over Pobelter. Mm -hmm. Level 2 ult is really big in that duel, but since the wave is pushed in, we'll see. This ward does see no name, by the way, so if EG want to try and counter gank again, they have the advantage as far as intel. Yeah, there are no pink wards. See how well they can beat this, though. To look for Helios right now. Xiao Wei Xiao goes in. Pobelter is going to pop the ult and go for this fight. Nice dealt by Xiao Wei Xiao, but they still find a little bit of damage in this one. More coming across. Nice Q lands, and Helios gets the kill for himself. No name, not even useful there. Hmm. So they use a pink ward and a teleport for that, though. Leaves Krepo exposed. Hook comes out. Nice dodge by the flash of Krepo. Altex says, hey, back off my support. This is a fun game. Yeah, 16 minutes, 14 kills. I like the pace so far. And Evelyn looking for another one. Ooh, it's gonna force no name away. Q goes to a wolf. He's safe. He's good. Closing in on more here. They do have vision. Crapo misses the binding. Scumbag cost his team a kill. This is these teams are so fun to watch because of the increased mobility by a talent who got that early two kills. Just shakes everything up so much. Yeah. EG's team was all about, yeah, we can have split pushes, we can even do 1-3-1 one uh, if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try and keep uh, Maokai separate from the rest of his team. Ooh, damage to Akron. Inox is still threatening. The Triforce being done allows him to do work in these team fights. These mid-game team fights are actually pretty good for Vasily, though, even though he had yeah. a really hard lane phase. Right now, he's bringing a lot to the table with a Trinity Force completed now, even though he was, he's 0-2, and he got shut down as far as CS is concerned. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Inox, though, even more. Has to flash away. Black Shield was on him, though. They stayed a little bit safer in this. EG do back away a little bit. LMQ still on this. Ackerman draining his mana pool ever so slowly with that ultimate. More poke They're from gonna Vasily, though. No! They can't go for this. No hook for Helios. No smite, rather. EG disengage every dragon now going to LMQ. Yeah, they didn't want to go in on the... Maokai ultimate was literally on every member of LMQ. Even at this early stage of the game, level 11 here already for Ackerman on the rank two. Too dangerous. He did get in there to look for the steal though, Helios was trying to grab it. Uh, unable to secure it though. Altec though, unable to secure his team's turret most likely. LMQ pushing this down rather rapidly. The Corky helping out plenty. And there we go, LMQ undefeated on dragons and only down one turret here. Puts LMQ in the slightest of gold leads. I feel like EG need to just calm down a little bit uh, because they can rely on wave clear of static ship versus Tristana and the split pushing power of their Nidalee and Zed. As long as they ward up, look at the wards that they have. They've got great wards right now. If they see Xiao is Xiao, which side of the map he's on, then they can play accordingly. They can play cautious on that side. And since EG have two viable split pushers, uh, they should be able to pull that one off until their Tristana gets to a point where he's able to at least finish his Infinity Edge, and then they can start fights once again. Yeah. Well, Altec, how quickly can you get to that point? Because right now, LMQ seems to be the team able to dictate the pace. Thankfully for EG, there's no neutrals up to really take, so maybe LMQ won't get to do much for five minutes, but... This is an aggressive team. They're going to find ways to fight you. Yeah, and the way that they'll fight you is with this... Uh, talent. Xiao is Xiao. Look, he's got an early uh, Last Whisper as well. So he's got the flat penetration plus percentage. Even though Inox went for armor first, expecting to split push against him, 
Shao Shao would be able to cut right through it. Ooh. Pogalto, though, he's got Helios at his back. And he wants in on Ackman there. Good damage coming through with the death mark. Now, can they take down the tree ulti pop by Helios? And yes, they will. Pogalto gets the kill. Shao Shao wants in. Pink Ward is pop finding. Has to be run away from. Altec wants this one now. Can he get enough damage, though? 600 health. Flash is in, and Altec claims the kill on the Shao Wei Shao. EG used their extra split pusher so well here. They had the perfect ward coverage. They even had a pink ward ready so that once uh, Xiao Xiao committed, they were able to turn it around on him. EG with a masterful outplay right there. Here we go, another team fight. Well, we already lost healers at the start of this fight, and the are gonna keep the rest of the team safe. LMQ punishing EG, the final oh! is dealing with the double. Here comes Altec, but here's a TP from Malkai. Altec goes down, three dead of EG. Teleport comes in from Ackerman, leaving the top side exposed though, and Ninox is doing work on the turret. But here comes Shadow oh, no. Shadow with Gopi available. <laughs> gotta be careful on that one. You gotta be extremely careful. He hasn't fought in Italy in a while though, so unsure if he could actually take that. I think that he could have. At least keep vision of him. Ooh, this is very dangerous. Ninox oh is gonna gosh. try and get vision. Oh, that trap reveals it though. The hunt doesn't land just yet. Inox doesn't see very far into this pit anymore. How many home guards here on EG? One, two. In comes Shao Wei Shao. Rake lands, doesn't do that much damage. Inox does trade back. Half HP onto Baron. Here comes Crepo. Another trap comes down. They so spot the team. Pobelzer goes in. He wants to kill somebody. He's going to chase down Vasily. Mora's already dropped down. Shao Wei Shao trades back on Inox. But now Ackerman's stuck inside the Baron pit, taking damage from the team as well as the neutral. Knocks him back, slows him down, binding. Nice dodge by Ackerman, but he's two shots from dead. One more Q, heals back up. Burst comes out from Vasily, but there goes Altec to trade back in. Looks like three for two, EG. What, what a crazy game here. Both teams not shying away from a fight. And, it, and we've got... <laughs> I think that was a rocket jump. Yeah, we've got a... Whew, we've got a ridiculous situation where... Uh, everybody has a lot of damage here, and everybody is going to be looking for these uh, spread out fights. Maokai, we've already seen the weakness there, though. Mm -hmm. uh, he's definitely not a split pusher. He cannot hang in this game uh, against either side, uh, Inox or Pobelter. And so LFQ make this crazy play here where they go inside the Baron pit very early on. This is a really early time to do it. And so EG are able to get there all the way back from base. Pobelter gets. Vasily out of the Baron pit, so even though Inox goes down really early, trying to keep a vision of it and stall them from doing it, taking out Vasily early here. Let's see, Ackerman gets a heal on the next, his next attack, which keeps him alive long enough for Vasily to take him down. And this time, Altec gets his revenge. Yeah, the weird visual bug there with the rocket jump. But last time, um, Altec jumped in on Vasily. <laughs> Yeah, he got blown the up. The opposite scenario where Altec had friends, or uh, Vasily had friends. I think we're just going to continue to see both of these AD carries. It feels like somebody threw down the gauntlet. Yeah. And they've decided that they will be very, very manly AD carries this game and continue to use their dashes into danger. I mean, it's two Yordles of Rockets, a really volatile matchup there, and one of them is going to blow up every time. They both have the Napoleon complex. Yeah, they do. The problem with playing too many Yordles here. Altec, five, one, and one. Infinity Edge done, he's already bought a chain vest. Altec knows to be afraid of Shao Wei Shao. No one gets bound up, and Ackerman, oh. though, cannot survive the Tristana. A good lantern not gonna save either. Pobelter gets the kill onto No Name, and now more is being chased down. The Q comes out, the Flay is gonna be just enough. The hook misses, though. And again, EG have the advantage when they're so spread out like this. What a binding. Shao Wei Shao is exhausted. He pops the ulti, runs away, and Pobelt is going to go down, but trades his <laughs> life against Vasily. Shao Wei Shao's got nowhere to go. He's going to drop to Altec. Two more kills for the AD carry. Eight, one, and one, and EG are into the tier two turret. It knocks up to the inhibitor as well. Evil Genius is brawling every second. This is only 23 minutes in, Freak. What an action packed game here. Yes, and it is. Vasily did not disappoint. That was, once again, another Valkyrie into danger, kills Pobelter, goes down. Can Inox escape here? No uh, name's on his tails. No name is trying. Inox doesn't leave quite as quickly this time around. He's gonna get out though. Wants to kill some golems. Evil Genius has now get the dragon <laughs> off of those fights as well, and EG feel pretty good about this game. What a beautiful, beautiful game here. EG creating the chaos that they need yeah. to take victory here.
People have been complaining about this Maokai for a long time and the team fight power, but Altec with red buff. Found All you him need. Out. There is no team. He's got a level advantage too. Altec right now is really, really strong. I believe he had completed Infinity Edge at this point too. They get two picks at the same time here. And even though Shao Shao comes in the back, there's nobody left, so he can't make his move. Gets hit with that binding and Crepo. Man, Crepo's hit percentage so far has been ridiculous. Vasily. There it is. Yep. I'm going in. I'm getting my kill here. He's got a quota for kills. <laughs> I wonder. Fantasy points all around. Shao Wei Shao wants to escape. The death mark tracks him, though. Pabelter gets the kill. Man, where is this EG all season? These guys look so good this week. More duels, please. Please, more duels. This is so fun to watch. They, EG, another outplay here. Krepo not only hits this binding, but also dodges the arcane smash from Ackerman. So you get bonus points for that. Uh-oh. No name. He hit the enemy one, team. The bot. Ooh. Perfect dodge. That is very, very good. But Krepo's on the chase. Lander comes out for Belter. Got to be afraid of Vasily. Gets the slow, <laughs> dodges the missile barrage. He's what good. a display. This game is dodging mechanics for everybody so far. Yeah, pretty pretty on point. Evil Genius is now up 7,000 gold. This game broke wide open in the last three minutes. And that's what people always used to talk about, the mentality of LFQ. They never stop trying to make plays. Mm -hmm. They've gone right back to it here. Even if they're down in gold, they'll continue to fight you. It's pretty much Vasily's play is the epitome of the entire team plan right now. Yeah. Even yeah, if LMQ have writer's block. Exactly. <laughs> they keep trying to make plays. Sometimes they don't make much sense. But every once in a while, you get that smash That's hit. how you get rid of writer's block, Freak. You just start writing down gibberish, whatever's in your head. Great. So uh, that's what LMQ are doing right now. They're just writing everything down. Yes. They're trying to get rid of their writer's block before playoffs. It's, just, it's actually really smart. I agree. And, and you're really <laughs> testing your limits very hard. Obviously, Xiao Wei Xiao had a wonderful start on talent. It is falling off, though. He went from 5-1 and one to 6-5. and five. Yeah, I mean, he can't be everywhere at once. This strategy from Evil Geniuses that we uh, looked at from the first couple of picks where they were looking to pull apart the team. As soon as you see a Maokai pick, EG go really double hard on the double split push. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, Ackerman going to this Maokai, as I said at the beginning, how only, we've only seen him previously on these oh. Lulu and Gragas picks. Going to Maokai, he doesn't seem that comfortable. He keeps getting caught out in the side lane, thinking that he can actually handle himself. Yeah. Whew. Ackerman's been best on champions that can just fight you. And Inox has been like inside LMQ's base half this game. Literally inside the base. Like, literally inside the base. He's Not like, like. <laughs> Oh, and they missed one skill shot on a stationary target. It's okay, he put it between the two, three points. <laughs> that one missed two, but they were moving at least. Oh, there you go. LM For two points. LMQ are looking to regroup the hero, though. It looks like they have caught their breath. Trying to regain vision control. Ooh. Evil Geniuses, though, I don't understand why they haven't uh, returned to the strong split push for this exposed inhibitor. It's been, it worked out so well for them. Yeah. They need wards back up. Bot lanes pushed in toward their own base. Inox gonna dive in for this one. They think they have the members. It, Altec pretty well protected. Hook onto Inox, but I don't know if he cares very much. There's a jump in towards the back line. But Woo! in comes the assassination attempt. They've already taken down Corky, and Helios is not done. He chases down Xiao Wei Xiao, and he's gonna say goodbye for that one. A couple of flashes, and now more's gonna get eaten up alive by Altec, and EG just aced LMQ. So, just the way that this game is going, how crazy it's gotten, Altec got a third item GA as Tristana. Fairly yep. rare to see that, but it looks like they're looking to end this game. 12 seconds left on Vasily, they can do it! Wow, 28 minutes into the game, EG already knocking down Nexus <laughs> turrets with the back door. Inox takes Three part seconds. of it. Krepa gets a little bit as well. There's both turrets. In comes Vasily. Can he save the game? He's trying to. He's got one. He's got two. But the Nexus goes down. What a game! In the video piece, everyone is saying the way you beat LMQ is you don't fall into their trap. You don't play their game of constantly fighting and nope. scrapping into it. But EG do play that game and they want to. EG pick a scrappy team. They want to fight people all the time and man, did it work out. The bindings from Krepo were on point. <laughs> all techs and gauges were pretty big. He went huge. Pobelter got a number of outplays. Helios' flanks were great. 
And Enoch lived inside the enemy base. They really deserve a 4-0 super week here. Yeah. Evil geniuses. What a showing from them. You know, right now, you don't want to be the second best challenger team. No, no, you do not. LMQ, they do still have the hope of a number one seed in the playoffs. They, of course, are guaranteed the bye. But it'll be up to our next game, Cloud9 versus Hotshot and the ragtag group of we don't know if they're friends or not. <laughs> to see who they're ends pretty up number friendly. One here. That's true. I was, I They've was, had smiles on. Yeah, I was talking to them and they're happy. They're, <laughs> they're all pretty good friends, though. Same they had su such success. I mean, they yeah. didn't really expect much coming into this. Yeah. And each game, they've gotten closer and closer to winning. So yeah. I feel like the games are going about as well as they could expect. They're obviously showing their individual prowess. Uh, you can't expect them to have the best shot calling as a new group of players. So you expect the bad dragon fights of the new CLG group. But Evil Geniuses, <laughs> I mean, what else can you say? They are playing on point. You're, they're playing the games their fans wished they'd been playing all year. And it does have a lot to do, I think, with the confidence they got uh, at the beginning of Super Week, coming out strong, winning the games early. Um, it, they really talked about how, at Krepo specifically, he said, when I did so well in lane, it just, it kind of flipped the switch for him, and he, he bought those early mobility boots, and then he started having the confidence just to roam around the map and make plays constantly. Yeah. Now it looks like it's carried over from game to game here. He's, yeah. he's throwing out pretty much every single binding that he can and they're all landing, so the bunch keep, of them. keep throwing them out. It's weird how like the, the, like the stress being relieved has made them play better in a way. Where like, even though they were mathematically in the playoffs, every time I heard one of the EG members talk, they're like, oh yeah, haha, three won the dream. Yeah, that's really funny. We're going to totally make it, yeah. like in a sarcastic tone. But 4-0, I don't think even they believe they, they would have done it. And to come in and to say, you know, it's okay, we'll play our best. We'll do what we can. We're kind of ready for the relegation tournament. And just a 4-0, some of the best teams in the league like LMQ, getting victories they hadn't gotten all season long. There's definitely something to be said for being relaxed and not being afraid of your opponent so much. If you are the bottom team on the standings and you've been losing so much, you, sometimes you get into the mindset and you play either too defensively, mm -hmm. you don't take enough chances, that you're, or you don't try and branch out, use things like Zed again, sure. or uh, Nidalee split push. But yeah, worked out well for them this time around. And X wanted to play Fiora, by the way. He wished he could play Fiora this game. He wanted that Reddit upvote, so yeah, he wanted the free he Reddit wanted karma. To, he wanted the free Reddit karma for completing the cycle there. But, I was but like, then well, he's got like, oh, I love Nidalee. I want to play Nidalee again. Yeah. This is my original champion. And he got it. And he got it. And he put on a really good show. It kind of shows at the very end why you do ban that champ against Inox. And hey, man, it's a scary champion for him. Scary player. EG did step up. They've done great. We do also have to give props to LMQ. Xiaowei Xiao going for the bold move, picking up Talon after Voiboy already had a lot of success. Mm -hmm. He had a lot to live up to. And they started out early very good. He had some strong roaming, even before he got his mobility boots, roaming up uh, to the jungle scenario where there was that small skirmish to get yep. him the money for those. Mm -hmm. uh, he played it pretty well early. It was just that there were too many uh, fires for him to put out. There were True. too many fires that EG were creating across the map. Uh, for Xiao Wei Xiao to be everywhere at once. Yeah, so the Talon didn't quite work out. Ended up 6-6-2 six, six off of a five-kill start, but couldn't quite capitalize anymore. And of course, you got to give props to ED for playing around that kind of split push power. Um, because, you know, he's going to one-shot most people on the team. Second item GA worked out for Alltech, didn't die anymore. Uh, first, uh, ar first item for Inox was an armor item as well. Uh -huh. Right? So they, the, uh, they knew what they were fighting against. I really liked the counter gank by Helios. Yes. Very, 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 very smart manu uh, maneuver from him. Yeah, so EG playing really well, but we're going to see uh, and hear more about this. We're going to send it over to the guys at the analyst desk for some post-game perspective on that huge win. Thanks, Freak. We want to welcome Pobelter and Helios, who are having a pretty good week, some might say. 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Helios, I have to ask you, yeah. how does it feel to have such a great showing this week? Uh, I think this week we all win game. Very happy. I have a little... I think I we have a little chance and dream, but... Yesterday, broken dream, <laughs> but I want to still win, and today, very precursor game, and we getting win, very happy. Oh, okay, and um, 
Paul Belter, I want to ask you, did you feel this coming on, this 4-0 Super Week in scrims, or did it just take you guys by surprise? Uh, I was pretty surprised we did so well this weekend. Um, our morale, was, like, honestly wasn't the greatest leading up to Super Week. Um, so, yeah, it was really surprising to just win all these games. As a matter of fact, the past two Super Weeks, you guys went 0-4. So you went 0-4, 0-4, now 4-0. What do you think were the factors that allowed you to turn it around so, so drastically? Um, I don't think there's anything specific we can pinpoint it on. It's just been, you know, playing together as a team for longer because um, we had relatively new... I mean, we had little experience at the beginning of the split, and now it's all sort of coming together. And Helios, what's it like playing with Evil Geniuses in a new team? Uh, I think Evil Genius' very new team was... Uh, need more ability up and need. Uh, I bring here and together practice and more now even better, but I think... Another player's same, and now EG more even better, and I think next season we can more good, and I think next season we can number three in, maybe. Oh, wow. Okay, and what's it like playing with Altec, and how does he stack up against AD carries you've played with before? Uh, he was very scaly enemy, always scaly, but I say him, don't, don't be afraid. Yeah, and always, you can kill all, you can kill, I'm, I always... Go for go ahead. I'm I'm and I'm die, but we win team fight. I say always, guys, I'm die, but you guys can win fight. So Paul Belter, with uh, Helios's admitted aggression right there, he's talking about <laughs> how he always wants to go in and fight. Do you feel like that's what you guys needed when you brought him in? Was somebody who was going to just make the decision to go in and fight now? Yeah, he really brought in like this sort of I guess clear, but just better shot calling that we didn't have before, and so he's really given us like a sense of direction on what to do and how to win. All right, and Helios, what's it like in North in the North American scene? What is your impression of the NALCS? I think NALCS is really good because OGN, maybe one time lose, can't do anything, only watch game. And, but LCS already, make, uh, this first week, second week, third week, always game and mm, not lazy, not lazy, lazy, always Waiting yeah. game and practice, practice. So, Pope like Elther, unfortunately, you guys are in seventh and outside of the playoffs. So, let's look ahead to what you guys need to do in order to make sure that you re qualify uh, back into the LCS. Um, well, we need to keep practicing. You know, we can't let ourselves get rusty, even though there is a bit between now and relegations. Um, Helios actually has to go back to Korea to renew his visa. So, That'll be kind of unfortunate, and I'm not sure yet if we'll be practicing with him or, you know, just like using a sub for practice. How do you keep the momentum up, though, with, you, given that the season is now ending? And you got to keep it going all the way through this great week you just had. You just had when you're five, five out of your life, five, yeah, five out of your last five games. How do you how do you keep that momentum up when you've got some time now so you have to play again? Um, you know, I guess it's just the motivation of. Thing of having a job still, you know, you don't really want to lose your job, so um, that will be the main factor. We don't want to drop out by any means after having such a strong showing. All right, speaking of not losing your job, I want to go to a fantastic replay here. You guys winning a team fight, holding on and giving a great case for yourselves. It's about the Baron pit, 20 minutes, 45 seconds in, ends up being a three for two. LMQ started up the Baron. What are the calls like? Poe Belter, walk me through this. Um, okay, so a few of us are dead and coming off spawn. Um, I go on Lee Sin and he's forced to flash out, and then I ult Corky, and so they all have to fall off the Baron, and then they're so low from the Baron damage that we just start to clean up as all of us are coming from base after we died bottom. And then we just keep chasing and then clean up, and then I think we're able to get some objectives off this. And what were you thinking during that fight, Helios? Enemy always getting me, but I think maybe me die, but I think our team can kill all. I think, or ace. Yeah. So that was a super chaotic fight. And we talked a little bit earlier about how the assassins are coming back into the meta. We noticed that they didn't take an exhaust to counter you on the Zed. So did that kind of give you the, the ability to just free roam and do as you pleased? Uh, yeah, that made me feel pretty good because, like, if you don't pack an exhaust against Zed, he's extremely strong. You know, he's going to deal his full damage combo every time. And he can always zone out the AD carry and then just jump back to his original shadow and. Uh, keep dealing damage for the rest of the fight. So I think them not taking exhaust was a bit of a mistake. All right, and you said the last fight was very chaotic. We're going to get to a much cleaner fight here. It's the game-deciding fight at 27 minutes. It's a clean ace, 5 for 0. 
tell me how you guys set this up and what led to that just being such a clean fight. Poe Belter. Okay. Um, Inox is chipping them down on the front. I think um, Krepo gets a very good bind here on Vasily. Yep. And then, so I'm able to just kill him instantly. Um, no one's dealing with Altic right now. They're all just trying to protect Vasily, but, you know, it's too late. Um, Talon at this point is very weak because he hasn't snowballed from the early game. And it's just a matter of us being ahead so much gold that we're just able to clean up. And they didn't kill you. Yeah. They didn't get you that time. <laughs> yeah, you lived that time. Uh, Helios, I have a question. Yeah. Which three teams do you think are going to go to Worlds for North America? Uh, I think this question really danger. <laughs> <laughs> I think really danger, but I think now C9 and TSM, uh, last one, I don't know, maybe, but maybe CLG now very hard to practice. I think CLG can go. So you just beat LMQ. You don't think LMQ is oh, in that oh. top running? My mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, oh, but I, I was like, I, you just beat yeah, him, yeah, knocked yeah, him all but, the way down. Yeah, but I think, yeah, C, uh, I think four team, C9, TSM, C, CLG, and LMQ, maybe LMQ world, C, CLG world, someone going, yeah. Yeah, nobody knows, because CLG is right now in yeah. Korea. Getting yeah, just rackets. guess, just yeah. guess, yeah. All right, Paul Belter, do you have an opinion on that? Um, I think it's anyone's game, really. I think even Curse can make it. Um, like, they've been beating all these top teams recently, and so I think that makes a good case that they could be able to take them in a series. All right. Well, I know we'll all be excited to watch how those playoffs play out. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us here on the desk. Congratulations on your 4-0 Super Week. It's definitely got to be a huge confidence boost, even though you are going through to relegations. Now, we've got to channel our broadcasting ulti for three and a half, but when we come back, we'll do some damage with our final LCS match. Cloud9 versus Counter Logic Gaming. Stay tuned. But Shemesha trades one back on the Inox. Now more being chased. Helios very low on mana, but it's gonna be enough. LMQ punishing EG the final. Oh! Philly with a double. Here comes Altec, but here's a TP from Valkyrie. Altec goes down. Nice dog by Ackerman, but he's two shots from dead. One more Q. Heals back up. Burst comes out from Vasily, but there goes Altec to trade back in. They've already taken down Corky, and Helios is not done. He chases down Shao Wei Shao, and he's gonna say goodbye for that one. A couple of flashes, and now more's gonna get eaten up alive by Altec. 